in the past people talk about how heavy the pads are on these horses, uh, how many nails we drive into a horse's foot, uh, how heavy those uh, action devices are on the horses, and just one thing right after another. And a lot of people don't realize that that's so blown out of proportion that, that it's really not funny. I mean, it, do, it does get ridiculous. They, the people got to realize a lot of these people, they do this because, number one, they found out a long time ago that if you talk about an abused animal, people love animals. They'll start giving more money. A lot of people don't realize it, but the American Humane Society, which is run by Marie Wheatley, I believe is her name, it started off as the Humane Society of America, the American Humane Society, for battered wives, children, and abused animals. Mm -hmm. Well, there was a small group that figured out that, hey, you know, they'll give for these abused animals quicker than they will this, and we can do a lot of different things over here on the abused animal bit. So they started it, and what it ended up was less than one half or one percent of what they raised went to actually help the animals in the shelters. Yeah, so there that, it is. That's similar to the Humane Society of the United States. That's who or, or formed, that's who, that was who, a spinoff okay. from the American Humane Society. All right, we're going to look at some weight differences here. We're going to start with a walking horse. Boots for a man. Now, two pounds, 1.9 ounces, which on a two on a 185 pound man, that's 12 percent comparison weight. Then you got a watch, and the ones we weighed, the first one weighed 3.6 ounces, which that was a 0 0.0014 percent. The second watch was 8.6 ounces. 0.003% if you compare that weight to a man that weighed 185 pounds. At the same time, if you look at everything that goes into a horse's hoof, eight nails, all right? Eight nails, 0.7 ounces, all right? Then you've got a starter pad, and that's all that goes into the horse's foot, is those eight nails, that's it, Jimmy and some of them don't use that much. Then you've got the starter pad, which, let it finish, that starter pad right there is 10.4 ounces, and this one right here, I believe, 10.4 ounces, the same. Now these are just the starter pad. That's what's actually nailed to the horse's foot. Everything else is nailed to it. The pads, the stacks, 5, point, five pounds, 5.9 ounces, all right? Now, if we take that and we look at our same chart all over again, on a, and we brought a horse out there that we're going to show in a little bit, 1,000-pound horse. Some of them said he weighed probably more than 1,000 pounds, but we just took 1,000 pounds. The pads on the horse, 5 pounds, 5.9 ounces, was a 0.0054%. So that's less than what the 2 pounds shoes does to an 185 pound, 185 pound man. Right there's the shoes, the boots, two point, two points, two pounds, 1.9 ounces. That's what the boots weigh. I wear them when I go to the barn. So it is pretty obvious. But the, what we're trying to show is if you compare things in reality of what they are on a percentage basis, we're more abusive to ourselves than, the, than to the horses because the, the comparisons show that that it to be a true fact. So if you look back at the chart, let's put it back up there. If you look down there, the pads was that. The action device, 5.9 ounces, and we're allowed a six ounce action device. That's what we're allowed. But that's a .004%. Right there is a 5.9 ounce, right there it is, 5.9 ounce action device. We're only allowed to use a 6 ounce. That's the largest we can use, Jimmy. The 8.9 ounce, I believe it was, watch is more on a 185 pound man than that action device is. And here's where we weighed the watches. One of them weighed 3.6. 
These are walking horse watches. And then I wanted something different because they say, well, he's just doing this. So I asked CJ, our cameraman, to take his watch off. I want. I said, let me weigh what you're wearing. Show what yours weight. This is CJ's. 8.6 ounces. So on a 185-pound man, an 8.6-ounce watch, and there's your scales. So before you start, anybody out there starts listening to what the people that trash this industry say, look at, just think about this and put it into perspective on what it actually is. It's nowhere near as bad as what they say. And I mean, that's fact. These, these are facts here. This is not something you can make up. The scales are postal scales, very accurate. I even mailed a letter just to make sure. <laughs> All right. Then, what we did, I took a horse that a lot of y'all have seen in Beretta. He's shown several times. Olivia Boyle shows him for me. After the last show he attended, or it was shown in, which was before the celebration, we put him up. The only time he ever got to work out is, in which was often, we took him and we put him in a round pen. This is the way we worked him out. We would bring him out, walk him to the round pen. We didn't reshoe him, we didn't do anything. We just wanted to keep him in good shape, keep him muscled up, keep him energized. We'd take him out, <coughs> we'd put him in the round pen and let him do his thing. We'd run him around the round pen both ways, let him get his exercise that way. Which to me is a good way to, to let a horse exercise if you're not gonna ride him. Because the main thing was I wanted to document this to where he was not ridden since before the celebration. And we're gonna, ride him in a little bit, but we're going to shoe him first. Because right now he's still got the same pad zone that he had when he showed before the celebration. So he, his foot's outgrown and everything. But by taking him and letting him go around and around the, the round pin here, we can exercise that horse as long as we want to. Just let him get his exercise. Of course, he got fed. He got to see the dentist, he got to see the veterinarian, he had his coggins pulled in great shape. But this is the this is the exercise he got on a regular basis. I can't tell through the fence. You have a rope on the horse or nope. nope. How are you getting him to move then? Walk with him. Just walk talk with to him, him cluck yeah. to him, and I get him to go around me. Yeah. And then I'll kind of move up in front of him and he'll go the other way. This was the way we exercised him. Well, after we did all that, I told him, I said, well, now it's time to get him out and bring him in, put him in the cross tie. So I got Junior to get him. Junior bringing him to the cross tie. Once we get him to the cross tie, they're going to brush him off, whatever. But then he's going to see Jerry Lewis. And Jerry Lewis is one of the premier blacksmiths in Tennessee. It's important that people know, they, the people out here that come after this industry, they're not, not very factual in what they say about these horses, Jimmy. They uh, say one thing when it's actually something else. And that, that's, the, that's the bad part about it. We just, people just don't know how these horses are actually treated. Now we, we're going to start resetting Beretta because he had an outgrowth, so we had to... Beretta is one of Jerry's horses. Yeah, that's one of my horses. I didn't want to ask somebody else to do what I was going to do because a lot of people told me I was crazy for doing it. But I believe enough in this horse that I, I knew that Beretta is, is a good horse. So I talked to them and I said they agreed that they'd let me video it. So here we are, we're pulling the pads here. And Jerry Lewis has a crew with him. It's, I mean, each one of them has a certain thing they do and they get it done. And uh, then Jerry gets in there and does his thing. So uh, I was really impressed with the way they did it. But you can see Beretta, he's just standing there saying, hey, I'll do what you want to do. 
I'm here. A lot of people don't believe that these horses will, uh, that you can stand there and they will let you do everything you need to do and them just stand there and let you do. But they're very docile. And Beretta is, is one that's a very special horse. He is, uh, he's still a stud and he will be five in May. Cleaning off his hook. Now, none now, of Jimmy. the stuff they're doing to Beretta here is going to hurt him at all. No. It's just right, like that right there. It's just like us going to uh, the manicure store. Right. And they, once they get done, they'll, they're they just cleaning his foot off now because you got to realize he has been in a stall other than the round pen since before the celebration. So he's got his exercise, he's got his food, he's just more or less been on vacation. Now they're taking taking that off, and they they explained to me that there is a some kind of um, oil inside a horse's hoof that once you when you getting that horse ready and you're saying cleaning off the the outer layer and everything, you have to go back and put they call it hoof tough, but it helps that horse's oils feed the hoof mm -hmm. to make it make it good and he, he did tell me that Beretta had real good hoof, real good hoof which always makes you feel good at Rafter get the job done I couldn't keep my foot up that long to do that, could you? No, I don't think so. Be honest, Jerry, Jimmy, it's necessary to do all this simply so people realize exactly what it is these horses go through to where some of the things that are said and the people try to make people that don't know horses or they, they try to get them to believe some things that are just un, unreal. So I figured the best way to stop it was to let them see exactly what it is. What he's doing now, he's filing down the nails that hold on the starter pad. He's doing that so he can take that pad off and not risk hurting the horse's hoof at all. Mm -hmm. Because when you put them, when they put these back on, you'll see where he takes and he, those nails are bent down. And then they, they've got a little wedge that they hold on there to make sure it goes down solid. He's cleaning out the, the bottom of the hoof now, or the bottom of the package. Because it does get a lot of mud and dirt. That was your starter pad. It's gone. Everything's gone off the horse's foot now. And what he's doing now, he's marking that pad to where he knows that's the left foot. Okay? Now they're getting ready to go back. They've already trimmed his hoof, but they trimmed off the excess on his hoof. Now they're going to put the starter pad on. They will put eight nails in here. Be four on each side. You see what they're doing? Let's well, see, they're, they're breaking those nails off and then they're, they've got a little metal wedge that they'll hold up there, bang it down, which bends them down. And then once they get them bent down, They'll grind them a little bit more, and then that, they stay. That's all that goes into the horse's hoof. And they're very careful the way they do it to make sure that it does not get in to where it's any painful, any type of pain to the horse. See, right there you are. Four nails on each side. 
holding that pad on. And I've heard them say that all the pads, all the nails in the in the package, which is the, the taller pad, the one that weighed five pounds. Right. They'll see how he's doing that now. They talk about how all those nails went into the horse's foot, and those those nails aren't even close to the horse's foot. One thing everybody needs to realize, Jimmy, video doesn't lie. It will, it will tell you, good, bad, or ugly, when you show the video, it's going to tell you what it is. Now he's positioning the package on the, on the horse's foot. See those nails he's driving down in through the starter pad into the package. Like the ladies and the gentlemen, when they go to the manicure, so you hold them hands up there and get them That's nails right. done. See how well behaved he is. Now, what he's doing, he's measuring. You got to have a till heel to toe ratio, and he's checking to make sure he's right. That's the way it goes, right? Now we're going to do the other foot. Takes a whole lot more to get a horse's foot shoes than it does a ours. We can just slip ours on. Yeah, right. <laughs> there he goes. Yeah, he's going to place it on there. Get it just right. See, that's hoof tough there, and they're sealing that back up to where those inner oils can keep that horse's hoof in good yeah. shape. Now the band goes on. One thing I was very impressed watching them do this, Jimmy. When you're in the show ring, if that band has to be a certain distance from the coronet, which I believe, according to the rules, it's a half inch. However, I believe now it's being enforced to where it has to be a little bit lower. But once he gets done putting the, the band on, which is kind of like shoestrings for us, he puts an extra nail in there to keep that band from riding up, to kind of keep it down, which I, I, I watched him do that. And I said, you know, that's pretty slick. But it, it, see, that's what said. It went right down on that band to keep that band from slipping up higher.
Now we're doing the back. And I'm gonna say something about this. A lot of people say, well, you know, you shoot the back end of a horse anyway. No, you can't. If that horse is off in his back end, it's gonna throw his front end out and it's gonna create a kind of a, a hitchy type of gait. So you have to be very careful that you make sure both of his back feet are shod the way they're supposed to. If you take one and you put that toe to where he's more up on his toe on one foot and he's down on the other one, it's going to create a hitch back there. So when you're, when you're getting your horses shot, look at both feet and how they're shot because once it's over with, it's over. Crimping the nails down now. Now this only took us about no, 12, 13 minutes, I think. A little over 12 minutes to watch this video. That's because I didn't show all of it. Because <laughs> right. it takes quite a bit longer. We didn't show them trimming all the hoof off that they have to trim and they have to cut out and dig out. But Here's the general idea of how these horses are shod and how they are treated. It, to me, people need to see it all. And I think this right here showed pretty much how our horse is treated as far as being shod the whole nine yards. Now, after that, we put a three and a half ounce action device on Beretta and we went out back and Jerry rode him. And here he is immediately after being shod, same day, he goes out and there he is. I'm not going to say he's perfect, but he is to be up and not being ridden, not have an action device on. And I'm talking about what? Before the sale, that's August, September, October, November, December, and this was last Wednesday. And as you can see, the longer he rode him, the better he got. That's a Tennessee walking horse. <laughs> 